Hi, I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from Your Black World, and I wanted to uh, take a second um, uh, to talk about some something that I just saw in the news. Uh, uh, just for the record, I am in um, Denver, Colorado right now, which is just such a beautiful place, and I spoke to the uh, but at the Black Student Leadership Conference here, um, and I love these these conferences because uh, I love getting a chance to help shape the minds of uh, future Black leaders of tomorrow, and, uh, and it was amazing. And um, and I just think college is a great time to really get those messages where you can lace your education with some inspiration. Uh, you can know the difference between education versus knowledge versus wisdom versus critical thinking skill. And uh, the students seemed to really get a lot out of it, and so did I, and it was amazing. Uh, the other thing I want to tell you before I start is that we have a new film out called Resurrecting Black Wall Street, where we're telling the story of, of Black Wall Street, the massacre, not, not a riot. It wasn't a riot. It was a massacre of black people in Tulsa, Oklahoma uh, in 1921, as, as well as the fact that no reparations were paid, no one was ever convicted of these murders uh, in these thefts. And also, we've talked about how we can resurrect those ideas and really apply that to the 21st century to build black Wall Streets in this day and age in which we live. Now, with that being said, here's here's the issue that I – oh, by the way, so with the film, I just want to tell you this before I forget. Uh, they told me to make sure I mention this. So I think it's important. Uh, the, you can find out more about the film at resurrectingblackwallstreet.com, resurrectingblackwallstreet.com. And uh, any support that you can offer would be so appreciated. We use this money to hire black people because we don't take money from people who don't, uh, who don't care about our people. Now, uh, I was reading about – uh, this guy, this this pastor, the Georgia president of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, uh, his name is uh, Sam Mosteller. And uh, uh, Reverend Mosteller apparently upset the leadership of the organization when he basically made statements saying that African Americans should exercise their Second Amendment, Amendment rights to protect themselves from those who are seeking to do them harm. Now, uh, let me read his comment, and then I'm going to read the SELC's remark and why they decided that they wanted to suspend him. Uh, so his comment is, we are going to have to do something in our community to let the rest of, of America know that we are not going to be victimized by just anybody, whether it be police or folks that decide that black people are thugs, and we need to control that, the, that black community. We are not going to allow that anymore. Uh, the SELC came back and they said the Southern Christian Leadership Conference was founded and maintains its position against violence of any type. We are founded on the bedrock of nonviolence, and we encourage those principles as we seek social justice and social change in American society and around the world. Although the organization does concur that the justice system in America has too often failed communities of color, particularly black youth, in reviewing the comments made by Reverend Mosteller on Wednesday, March 31st, we have found that his comments do not represent nor reflect the principles and position of the organization. Okay, uh, let me tell you why that's nonsense. Now, don't get me wrong, don't hate the SELC. SELC is fine, they've done good work, but um, I don't see anything wrong with what the, the pastor said. Uh, he fully supports the idea of nonviolence. Nonviolence, you can you can have a gun and still be nonviolent, uh, because there, he's not saying go get your guns and start a revolution, which some people say is justified, given that African Americans are the most incarcerated group of human beings on the entire planet. Uh, a lot of people don't understand that the incarceration issue uh, and the war that's been declared on black people has literally led to the destruction of an entire generation, the destruction of countless black families, the destructions of millions of lives. It has taken more lives than the Nazi Holocaust did in Germany. Uh, so in the data support this, this is not me making this up or me being dramatic. The fact is that war has been declared on black people and the people that are winning the war, are the people that do have the guns. Um, now, you know, moving on. Um, so, so, but the thing is here, here you go. Reverend Mostella was not pushing the envelope in terms of saying everything he could have said. He didn't say, let's declare a revolution, let's fight back. He said, have your gun in case somebody wants to hurt you or the people that you love. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, what's funny to me is that is that African Americans are the only people so, who are sometimes deluded um, into thinking that we can live in a violent country and maintain a position of complete nonviolence and complete disarmament. You know, remember that nonviolence, again, sometimes being armed can actually facilitate the idea of peace. <laughs> because if someone knows that you're going to fight back, they are less likely to mess with you. So um, sometimes peace is maintained by not allowing yourself to consistently be a victim. In fact, there is no, um, there, there is no sort of, um, there, there's no, uh, how can I say this? Some people think that there's some sort of integrity in victimhood or that you're somehow pursuing justice by showing the world how much you're victimized and how much somebody's kicking you in the butt. I'm not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of black people getting, getting kicked in the butt, and I'm certainly not a fan of the idea of anybody. And I'm thinking, let's say particularly, for example, a man of the house, thinking that uh, you can negotiate with your enemies who have guns who want to kill you and your family. You can negotiate them by praying for them and singing, we shall overcome. No. Uh, you know, when somebody rolls up in your crib ready to 
blow your children away in front of you. You want to protect them. You don't want to come back and because you can't depend on these cops. I mean, these cops, they, the cops might kill you themselves. Uh, you can't depend on on luck or on fate or on prayer or whatever the people think that you're supposed to depend on. Sometimes you have to be prepared to defend yourself. Now, am I a car carrying member of the NRA? Hell no. I don't support the NRA because the NRA is so money hungry that they will let little children die uh, in order to make as much money as possible. After the Sandy Hook tragedy, uh, there, people just wanted to push forward relatively modest legislation that would require uh, every gun owner to get you know, certain background checks, uh, mental illness checks, things like that. They, were, they try to block all of that, and it's not because they believe in the Second Amendment stuff. That's nonsense. They block it all because they're trying to make as much money as possible, and they make money when they're dropping guns off in the hood, letting young kids blow each other's brains out. That's how they're making their money. That's why when Pastor Father Flager, uh, Fo or Father Flager, not Pastor Father Flager, uh, Father Flager in the South Side of Chicago protested against one of the gun shops that was delivering guns into the South Side of Chicago, uh, he was getting death threats from members of the NRA who didn't want him cutting off their money supply. So the NRA is nonsense. We know that. But what Democratic liberals have fooled you into thinking is that somehow advocating for the simple Second Amendment rights of law-abiding, peaceful black people is somehow supportive of the Republican agenda to sell as many guns as possible or supportive of the NRA or the right wing and all this other stuff. And I think that's silly to me. That's very, very silly. And, and the other thing, too, is is that by, by the SCLC uh, getting rid of this man for, for having ideas that are that pretty much uh, can, be do, can be broken down into common sense – they're really kind of show, playing their card. They're kind of showing their card. They're showing that, look, we're not as much of, of an organization that advocates for the rights and the protection of black people as much as we are an organization that supports the liberal agenda. A liberal organization is not the same as a black organization. See, we have been fooled into confusing the two. We've been fooled into thinking that that the blacker I am, the more liberal I have to be, the more I have to go along with all the liberal nonsense in order to keep getting, keep getting support from people who have basically made themselves into our economic and political overseers. Uh, these organizations, uh, these, these democratic liberal organizations, they give money to organizations like the, the SELC, NAACP, stuff like that. And the stipulation is that if you get our money, you must support our agenda, even if it conflicts with the agenda of your people or the agenda of, 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 you know, of, of the black community at large or the people that you're supposed to represent, right? So here's one of the things that you see, that, that and this thing really bothers me. You'll see a lot of these democratic liberal organizations that will show up at your church and tell you, uh, punk you into voting for them. They'll tell you little stuff like, you know, look at how many people die for the right to vote. These racist white people out here, they don't want you to vote. These Republicans are bigots, and if they get elected, they're going to destroy the whole black community because Republicans are bad, Republicans are racist, so you need to show up and vote for me so I can protect you from the Republican boogeyman. But then when they are elected and you go to them and you say, Look, these are some issues that black people are dealing with. Black people have unemployment that's twice as high as whites. Black people are dealing with massive amounts of violence. Black people are dealing with severe injustice in the, in the criminal justice system. We, we, our children, our babies are being sent to prison for 50 years at a time for, for minor offenses, and it's destroying our families, destroying our community. We need you to deal with that. Our schools are adequately underfunded. We need you to help us fight on these issues. We need you to be as diligent to fight on this as you were uh, fighting for to get us to exercise voting rights when you were getting elected. Well, you know what happens then? They ignore you. They don't pay attention to you. It goes all the way to the top. So basically, what I encourage you to do is not to listen to me. Not Don't do what I tell you to do. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not your boss. I'm certainly not trying to be a replacement pimp for the pimps that are already trying to control your mind. That's not my role. My, my role is advisor to you so you can do what's right for you and for your family and for your community, period. My advice is think critically. Look, look at the don't don't assume that these organizations really have your best interests at heart. Uh, don't assume that these Democratic candidates that come along uh, getting you to vote for them have your best interests at heart. I'm not telling you to go out and be a Republican either because we, we know that what the Republicans do. We know what they offer. I don't even have to talk about that. Uh, but I do think it's OK to vote independent. I do think it's OK for some people to even abstain from voting. I'm not telling you. But again, this we will have another conversation about voting rights. So let's leave that off the table for right now. Let's, but more specifically with the SELC issue. Um, I think that we need to get away from this idea that somehow um, not that 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 you can't believe in self-defense and nonviolence at the same time. You know, I can be nonviolent with a gun on my hip. That means I'm letting you know it's about to be peace right now because you don't want to mess with me. I don't want to mess with you. We're going to both be nonviolent. 
But as soon as you change the rules, as soon as you flip the script, as soon as you try to hurt the people I care about, I'm about to pull this gun out and take you down. Because it's either me or you at that point because you made the choice to pursue violence. And therefore, the only way I can respond to that is to put the fire out by making sure I protect the people I love. Nothing wrong with what this man said. Um, I think that uh, the SCLC should be ashamed of disciplining him for, for saying what even I think even in their hearts, they know what's right. Uh, the money, I believe the money got this man removed from his position. And I hope he keeps speaking. I hope that, you know, again, he doesn't need to be with the SELC to have a voice. Uh, I hope he keeps that voice and he keeps it consistent uh, because none of this really makes any sense to me. You can own a gun. You can exercise your Second Amendment right and still pursue nonviolence and still not be, be supportive of what the NRA is trying to do. Those things have to be separated. Don't let the Democrats and the liberals control your thinking because that's what they do. In fact, uh, one other thing, and this is the last thing I'll say on this uh, that really is interesting to me. You got these corporations now that are boycotting, you know, I guess certain states and stuff like that over LGBT issues. Like Indiana, they're upset about the whole uh, anti, anti-gay anti legislation and or or they call it the religious freedom bill. It, whatever, however you want to look at it, it is what it is. But but so, so but it's funny because these same corporations have clear data that show that they clearly discriminate against African Americans. They have managerial positions that have never been occupied by a black person. They have uh, co departments where there is only one black person out of seventy people, and black people are trying to get in and can't get in. They've had black people that leave the company because they're being mistreated. They have black people that are constantly complaining because they're victims of racism, but they don't say a thing about that. They won't boycott over racism, but they're boycott over LGBT issues. And what makes us political pawns is that you got some black people who will fight as hard or harder on an LGBT issue than they will on a on an African American community issue, and 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 I'm just not a fan of that. Um, and I think that the first step to kind of getting away from this 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 socio political or eco economic uh, or pol uh, socio economic I guess plantation is to find ways to support our own ideas, support our own institutions, uh, get away from these old school institutions that that don't that have been just so co opted that they're not that they've diluted. Uh, the mission of, of, of black equality. Uh, it doesn't mean that they don't have a role in the world, but it, fine. If they want to take their money from, from liberal whites and, and pursue their agenda, then let them do that. But you know, at the end of the day, as, you, as a critical thinker, I encourage you to know who has your back and who doesn't. So, so the bottom line is very, very simple. Um, you know, I'm always going to be nonviolent, always. But guess what? At some point in the near future, I am going to get a gun because I live on the south side of Chicago. I don't trust the cops and I don't trust some of those people who don't care about the community and who will roll up in my house, take my stuff and kill the people I love. You better believe it. I will protect my family and there's nothing wrong with you doing the same thing. So that's all I'm going to say. Uh, I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from Your Black World. And also we have this new documentary out, Resurrecting Black Wall Street. I mentioned it earlier. I hope that you'll come to that site and support us. Uh, the uh, documentary, I think it's, uh, they're giving a 20% discount for anybody who pre-orders it. It comes out May 1st. Uh, it tells the story of Black Wall Street. It's an, you know, it, it's, it's an amazing story. We can all be inspired by it. And again, we're going to use your money to hire black people. So I hope you'll give us 20 bucks so we can do this. Uh, and that's all I really want to say. So I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from Your Black World. Please take care. God bless. I am gone. Peace.